I'm Dr. Robert Johnson. I'm a dentist in Salmon Arm. I graduated in 2009, moved there and bought a practice. The fall of this year, fall 2021, I had a, some person who I've never met or spoken to filed a complaint with my regulatory body, the College of Dental Surgeons of BC, and just sent them an email and said, I don't know where the college stands on these matters, but I've got some concerns about Dr. Robert Johnson from Salmon Arm because he's an avowed anti-masker, anti-vaxxer. He goes to the COVID misinformation rallies and he like doesn't follow the provincial health orders. I just had an issue with the fact that they actually sent this to me and expected me to respond to it like it was legitimate, right? So I shot this video and they put it out there and it just went crazy. I think I need to start right off the bat by addressing this, these ideas of, you know, anyone who is opposed to Bonnie Henry's ridiculous mandates is a conspiracy theorist, anti-vaxxer, anti-masker. Um, because those are labels that have been invented to just be able to discredit and dismiss anybody that is trying to say, hey, this doesn't make any sense. The reason that I personally decided not to get vaccinated was because I actually did uh, my undergrad degree before I got into dental school was honors biochemistry. So I took a lot of courses on immunology and physiology and virology. And, and you know, when I, when I first heard them talking about this concept where you're going to take mRNA and put it into my body so that my cells can produce this protein for my immune system to recognize an attack, that made no sense. I was like, why would I do that? Like, which of my cells are doing that? That's a terrible idea. Like, how is that not gonna cause autoimmune diseases and all kinds of ridiculous problems? And, and I was like, I don't, I, I have no risk from the actual virus. Like, there's no, I mean, if you're gonna at least, you know, had they taken a targeted approach and said, okay, well, these high risk people that need to be protected, we're gonna protect them. But, so I guess the thing for me too is it's like, so it's like the second you're telling me that I have to do this in order to keep my job, we have a problem with this, our relationship. I've actually been running around saying, I wouldn't get this vaccine if I thought it was a good idea under these conditions. Because you can't, you can't consent, right? And so that's the problem is you technically cannot actually provide informed consent to this procedure under this nonsense. And so I'm not doing that. Like I wouldn't even do it if I thought it was a good idea, but I think it's an absolutely terrible idea. So there's absolutely no way that I'm gonna do it. The impact of this on, uh, you know, relationships and friendships and family and coworkers has been just absolutely ridiculous because I, so I practice with my wife and we share an office with another dentist. So there's probably 14 or 15 or 16 people that work in, in there. There's me and our hygienist are the only two unvaccinated people and the only two people that are like against us. I mean, again, the problem is, is that there are some people out there who even if you actually believe in the vaccine, you've got vaccinated yourself, you thought that was a good idea, you sh if you have any sense, you would still be opposed to the mandates, right? Like the mandates are still problematic. That's, that's my whole argument this whole time is the question of how bad is COVID really and how safe and effective are the vaccines really is not actually relevant to the discussion of are we mandating these things? That has to be a hard no. There's no excuse for that. You can't just unilaterally have the state decide that they're gonna change the way that our society functions. It's obviously difficult. Like my, my, entire, my entire family, like my whole family's out in Alberta, they're all double or triple jabbed and they just, they, my, my stepmom said she wished she could just come and give it to me in my sleep and that I'd stop being such a goofball. And I was like, I, it's unbelievable. Like I, it's like the cognitive dissonance of these people is mind boggling. And that, that's the thing for me that's so frustrating. It's like, I don't know how you even fix that. Like you, like, because they literally scream at you that they don't want to talk about this, right? And so I'm like, well, if you can't talk about it, then we're then we got a serious problem here, which is more fundamental than anything else, right? I'm not a fan of the government interfering in my life. I don't believe in licensing and regulation. I think that's all. I'm not a statist, and so and I think this is a perfect example of why that's a terrible idea because these policies are absolutely ludicrous, and like these people are not even functioning like they're acting like tyrants and dictators right they don't even seem to recognize that they're supposed to work for us like it's like we why is there no functioning mechanism of system of checks and balances where we can push back on this and say we're not doing that because it's stupid you know some people say that's the that's the negative 
of what's going on now is that the public trust in the government and the media is getting damaged by this, but I think that's actually the positive because I think that it, you never should have trusted these idiots in the first place. So.